Dr. Bhaskar Ramurthy, Director of IIT Madras and an internationally renowned scientist. I request Dr. Bhaskar Ramurthy to present on the topic, Technology. Please, sir. 5 o'clock and I am sure all of us are very tired. My predecessor, Mr. Pandirajan said he is only an MLA, I am only a Vadiyar. <laughs> Normally, Vadiyar speak for 15 minutes minimum, but I am going to speak very briefly. Uh, uh, fortunately, she is not a student, so she can stop me. <laughs> not a student here. <coughs> the, now I want to just leave you with two or three simple things to think about. So, technology is, uh, you know, is a, what is technology? You know, there is, there, we have a lot of extreme responses to the notion of technology especially in the current era where it rains, where it impinges on our lives in so many ways. There are many who worship technology for its own sake. There are others who see it as something that is destroying the world and there is truth in all of this, right? They see technology as the main reason why we are heading towards catastrophe, climate change, whatever, whatever. We saw Dr. Ponraj give horrifying figures of what a simple round trip that he and our former president Dr. Kalam took, what does it imply? So there are these extreme views, but I think the way to for us to look at technology is that it is a means to an end and what is our, what are our ends, what is it that we are looking to do in India. One of the first things that I think that is uppermost in our mind as we as I said in the morning is that we want to address our challenges. We have serious developmental challenges. We need to address our problem in healthcare. We couldn't have heard a more passionate speech on that. We need to address our problem in education. I don't think we could have heard a more passionate call for a joyful education system from uh, Dr. Johnson. We need to address our agricultural problem. We are there is no doubt we have distress in agriculture, there is no doubt that we have uh, many, many crises there. We need to address that, that includes water and then healthcare, you know, sanitation comes in. We need to address our housing problem, we need to address energy problem. Dr. Ponraj talked about it how much coal can we go on burning, how much oil can we go on importing, how do we use renewable energy, and so on and so forth. So, technology becomes a means to address these issues. This is probably, you know, in that sense, technology is probably, in, for the, in that particular uh, role, technology is probably most important for all, among all the countries in the world today for India. There is another role and that is technology also is the projection of power. You have the example of a small country which projects power vastly disproportional to its size merely through, you, through the use of science and technology. Whether you want to do it is another issue, but if as a country, the country wants to project power, then technology becomes an important aspect of it. It is also vital for certain things, there are as the technology gets more advanced, as it gets becomes more difficult to figure out, you do have technology denial. So, if you want certain technologies for defense, for nuclear, for space, whatever it is, if you need it again, then you have to figure it out yourself. So, these are broadly, I would say the three most important things and the projection of power and the technology denial have some overlap. So, we have to understand as a country how to make policy so that we can most first and foremost leverage technology to address our challenges. And depending on the consensus in the country as reflected through our democratic parliamentary system, if we want to project power, how do we do it? If we want to access certain denied technologies, how do we do it? The and then you know everything this job creation, it is all related to technology, healthcare is also related. You know, he mentioned about the 108 ambulance. Um, he was talking about the fact that 20 percent, 21 percent of the cases were involving maternity. Just recently, we, our institute developed a, a neonatal incubator and added it to the 
ambulance okay so uh, you know technology matters that improves now the child is child is born prematurely now that can also be handled first uh, first response can be given in the ambulance itself okay so this is the way things improve now why was this developed locally because it has to be localized it has to be suited to our requirements there is a cost issue there is a require there is a suitability issue and we have just you know uh, mr ahir ji was here in the morning i had invited him here a couple of months ago to see the affordable housing uh, rapid, uh, rapid housing technology that we have developed because i want you know it involves a by product a waste product of fertilizer factories and um, so i wanted his uh, assistance in taking it forward so in all this when we do all this one thing we have realized is that this now i'm addressing because in this seminar is primarily about what we can do from a governance point of view from a policy point of view so it, technology becomes very important to address our problems very often we have to find new ways of solving our challenges addressing our challenges you can't just import a solution because it doesn't fit it say that too uh, unaffordable or it has aspects to it doesn't fit our requirements you have to uh, you know develop something not necessarily reinvent the wheel but develop something ab initio taking all the good features that are understood elsewhere but making it in the form and in, in the manner in which we want it when you do that there's always uncertainty you know tech, there are technology development of technology is is a graveyard there's for every one that works there are 10 that are buried that haven't worked which you know which you never hear about so you have to have that ability this very much you know you see that in startups but happens even in whichever form you do it it happens technologies there are more that are buried than make a success so you have to have a way by which things can be tried out and try you have to scale up the trials and things will fall apart at various stages the ones that have been conceived right have been then fine tuned and modified will make it the that process of taking risk that process of uh, enabling the, the technologies to be tried out and assessed and modified and criticized and so on requires public financing to a great extent in most countries you can quote america you can go anywhere you will find that actually the initial money for developing some new especially disruptive approaches would have come from government sources it may have been done very not through not on misfashion through a foundation etc but finally it's public funds and uh, very often a, a, a fair amount of this money also goes not only to publicly funded institutions which carry out this research but also to private enterprise in in us in israel is not uncommon for good ideas that are being tried out in uh, very often in a collaborative mode between national laboratories and private enterprise to be funded for the trial phases and so on not for the deployment phase that's usually very often done by private funds but in this phase this aspect is very difficult in india uh, our way of handling you know uh, we were discuss looking at various things in the morning we were discuss we had the uh, presentation by um, honorable mp mr choudhury on how the you know accountability and independence in the legal system and so on see we are willing to we are think we are discussing about how to vest our representatives with powers to decide and of course make mistakes but we actually uh, in if you look at our indian system of governance the power to make financial mistakes actually dies away very quickly i think the pres- prime minister has some powers to make financial mistakes and maybe a few <laughs> am i right <laughs> but the moment you come down to this this you know the the way the accounts are done now you can't if 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 in government you invest in something and it turns out to be a flop then it's a mistake okay there's no it's not accepted so there, there are so we are seeing that you know i've been we are seeing that when we come up with new ways of doing things which are not proven elsewhere and therefore there's a risk uh, there's a great difficulty in uh, in the public finance of that of those new technologies to check them out okay we are seeing that in all these new things that we are trying that are being tried out not just from here but rest of the country this has to change somewhere we must be able to because our problems are not going to be addressed simply by uh, you know simple uh, import of a few ideas from here and there and so on if you look at the housing challenge uh, you know we want the latest sample surveys makes it very clear there are 2. Uh, um, 23 million houses needed in rural areas and probably an equal number in urban areas for the absolutely the people who are living in in leaky huts or slums now that number if you want to do it by 2022 as has been 
for dreamt of you can calculate what's the what what do you have to do per day <laughs> and how do you do it and at the price at my at the level of money that seems to be available it's a big challenge right but if you want to do that you got to try new ideas and if you want to try new ideas nobody is going to buy you know even, i mean nobody should invest in a new idea without going at it in a step by step but speedy fashion to check whether it has it works whether it checks all the boxes whether it it's sturdy whether it's it won't leak whether it lasts and all those issues are there now how is who's going to do that so as since we have one candidate approach for that as we struggle through that we're finding this so much paralysis and how do we go forward the easiest part was actually the development of the technology now we are stuck in fact i went and made a presentation to the honorable minister and he said if your technology is already approved the standards have already been approved the building codes have been written why have you come i said that's where my problem starts up to now i could handle we finished it we've done everything we could do now we don't know what to do we have to build 100 houses we have to build 1000 10000 houses they, you know and maybe at that point there'll be enough confidence to say okay you know people will just use this approach or maybe it'll die maybe it's got some fundamental flaw it's perfectly fine you know we'll go back to doing something else and you start some other approach but we need to find out so this is an important thing that i want to point out to you the concept that we need to figure out how to take risk how to finance risk not just in mean, risk finance in companies is, is understood but even in uh, in new approaches every new approach is fraught with risk so we have to finance that we have to uh, we have to be able to clearly say we think this will work and it did or it didn't and if we you know and there was no hanky panky it was all done right but that's it it didn't work so this money is well spent but it's gone okay or it worked and so we solve one more problem you know he talked about how we have the uh, infant you know infant uh, mortality rate and uh, maternity uh, you know maternal uh, deaths and death, death during uh, maternity and so on but what if some of the ideas that were tried didn't work you know would that necessarily make those ideas you know that attempt to, uh, as something that shouldn't have been done that's the question it was attempted honestly because something new that was tried didn't work didn't work right so but somebody thought it would and if it had worked it would have made a big difference this is the point i was one point i wanted to make and uh, i think that's becoming more and more required now because whether it's education whether it's you know uh, whatever you're going to try, all those things that we've talked about today we are going to need radically new ideas and uh, they are there the ideas are coming uh, but everywhere we are seeing this you know you can go fast get the thing what looks like might work and then there's a huge gap we also have we need to capacity building also if you come up with a new medical device uh, that might help in some fashion we just don't have any uh, infra any uh, capacity in the country to certify you know to declare that device as safe or unsafe we don't have any of those things and that's true in telecom that's true in everything it's my area is telecom you know i think we should also understand very clearly where you know today in the gst for example there's a huge way of calculating all the taxes you know where how much you paid where and then you finally pay the total amount this if for everything that we do any new product any manufacturing that we do we must calculate back calculate to see how much employment it is really generating in everything that leads up to that product so if you assemble a phone in india today where the processor display memory and uh, um and uh, uh, and the battery comes from somewhere else uh and you have not gone in you have not done much to to designing any of those things then you will have very little yeah, we'll have you'll have very little value add on the other hand if it turns out that you have got ip in some of that and you've actually designed into it then it may not matter at all it may be it may be quite fine so we need to track that we need to find out what it's generating you know employment is not just the number of people in the last factory what about the, all the employment that went in to create that product we have we have to audit all that and then we'll know which which things are really worthwhile and which is not really worthwhile pursuing so this kind of approach where we use technology to solve our problems to to solve our employment you know our skill uh, our um, problem of creating organized employment solving all our uh, addressing our challenges and wherever required addressing our technology denial issues our power projection issues and so on we need i think the one message i want uh, overarching message i want to convey is that we need to find a way by which responsible people government parliament and so on can take considered decisions on technological risk and where it works will it will be a pay off where it doesn't well that's always part of the game thank you very much thank you for your informative speech sir i request dr jagannathan to give over a memento to dr pascal ramurthy please sir